Okay, so Becky, we're ready. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Becky Bash. I'm a senior planner with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, and heading up this age and dementia friendly community initiative. So happy to be here. Um, I am a resident of Williamsburg, but happy to be working in Amherst. I'm Haley. Um, so I'm Haley Bolton. I'm the C director of senior services, been on the job for all of three weeks now. Um, not an Amherst resident, live in South Deerfield, but very happy to be a part of the town. Yay, we're excited that you're with us. And this is such great timing um, for, for having you start. Uh, Paul? Um, I'm Paul Bachelman. I'm the town manager. I'm not part of the group, but I'm really excited about the work, this work getting started. Um, I've lived in Amherst for five years. And then before that, I went to college at Hampshire College. So I was here for that period of time. And then had a little piece of break in between. So thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Mia? Maya? Mila? Oh, Mila? I'm Mila. Yeah, yep. I'm Mila Montemayor. I'm not sure. Am I in the right group, Rosemary? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have been uh, living in Amherst for about four years. And uh, I was with a group of it, Rosemary, on the Council on Aging. And this is my first time to see such a big group here. I'm so happy to meet you all. Yay, we're happy. We're happy you're here. Uh, Nancy? You. Nancy Gilbert. Um, I've been in Amherst um, 37 years, but in the area, 48 years. Um, I'm chair of the Board of Health right now. In the 80s and 90s, I volunteered at the Senior Center, and my background before I moved over to public health was gerontology and home care, and right now we've helped three of our older neighbors um, who have been healthcare advocates to make sure that they were getting the right kind of services and care. Great. Uh, Rosemary? Yes, I'm Rosemary Koffler. I'm part of the leadership team of the Amherst Council on Aging. I've lived in Amherst since 1965, so it's a long time. And I'm happy to see such a large group here. Yay. Uh, Captain Stephen? Oh, uh, you might have to. Uh, no, yeah, I, I'm Steve Gaughan. I'm a shift captain at the Amherst Fire Department. And the, this project addresses a population that we interact with on a daily basis. Um, and we also have uh, actually a number of staff who have um, family members who have had or are currently uh, address deal with dementia. So it's, it's kind of an interesting and important thing to us. So I want to see how this project was going and what, what it enticed. Great. We're, we're happy that you're here. Uh, Steve George. Uh, so I'm Steve George. I've lived in Amherst for 49 years. And I guess my vital statistics make me uh, give me an interest in the project and um, maybe not, hopefully not a conflict of interest, but I'm um, also on the board of health. So I'm interested for that reason also. Great. Uh, Steve, uh, Liz Walsh. Oh, you're muted. Um, my name is Liz Welsh, and I am on the board of Amherst Neighbors, um, and I'm also a home care and hospice nurse, so um, get to see a lot of the ways that older people are living in Amherst, so I'm very interested in this. Uh, great. Alex? I'm Alex Lefebvre. I'm a Jones Library trustee. I also grew up actually in a multi-generational house with four generations, and have continued to live in a multi-generational house. Um, so have seen both Alzheimer's and dementia firsthand and I'm thrilled to see this committee happening. So thank you. Uh, Carolyn? Maureen, I just wanna jump in. There's a couple of people in the attendee box. Yeah, um, so uh, those, there's um, uh, the attendees. I have tried to uh, make you a panelist. Uh, you may need to press, uh, click on a button. Um, I'm, um, to be promoted as a, um, a panelist. And I believe if you call in from a phone number, um, uh, you'll just remain as an attendee. And um, once it's your turn, we'll, we'll allow you to talk. I think you need to press um, um, star six or star nine to speak. I will look into that. But thank, thank you, Becky, for pointing that out. Um, Carol? Yeah. Hi, I'm Caroline Letterman, and I'm um, the board president of Amherst Neighbors, and I've lived in Amherst for 15 years and in the Valley for 23. 
Great. Uh, John Hornick. Oh, uh, John, you're muted. Yep. I'm John Hornick. I have lived in Amherst for about 40 years, and I am chair of the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. So that's one interest that I bring to this group. I want to be looking into what the housing needs are of older adults in Amherst going forward. Great. Uh, Charlotte? Hi, I'm Charlotte Mullen, and I apologize for the construction noise behind me, but um, my family moved to Amherst in the mid-1970s. Um, I no longer live in Amherst, but my dad, who's in his 80s, uh, does still live in Amherst. So as a caregiver, that uh, was what sparked my interest when I saw the announcement of this meeting. Great. Uh, Nancy? Uh, Nancy Eddy? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Nancy Eddy. I've lived in Amherst for over 60 years, uh, now live at Applewood. And I think you'll find there are several people here from Applewood uh, who saw your announcement and are very interested in what's going on in general with aging and dementia and how uh, Applewood residents can um, participate and help out as needed. Great. Uh, Lucia? Hi, everyone. I'm Lucia Tarowski. i am um, been a sort of off and on resident of the area for many years. I'm a master's student at UMass Amherst, and I'm a research assistant with the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. Great. Um, Chief uh, Tim Nielsen. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, there oh, I go. There, there we go. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, Chief Sintun, also with the fire department, I'll echo what the Captain Gon, Gon said. Uh, our day to day, we were in the interacting with the folks, folks that, that, that this committee will be focused on. And we want to see where we, we uh, can end of the end of the intersect and be uh, be you know, assistance or part, part of what, what, what this, this group is trying to try and do. I mean, we, we are part of the community, so this, this means a lot to us. Great. Uh, Dottie Rose? Oh, I'm Dottie Rosenthal. Uh, I didn't know how to put my name up, but I got my email there. Um, I live at Applewood, and uh, Nancy Eddy and Pat Wish, who's here, and several other people are going to be looking into how residents at Applewood can best deal with other residents who are having some dementia. So we're here to see what we can learn from you and whether you can be of help to us. Great, great, Dottie. Uh, let's see here, um, uh, Mary? Um, hi. Hello. Yes, that's hi. I'm Mary Terrell. I also live at Applewood. Um, I've been here three years. I've been in the Valley since 2006. I'm a retired geriatric psychiatrist, so I know a good deal and I want to be able to help. And thanks. Great. Uh, Sue Laudry? Sue Lowry. I'm a Lowry. retired. I'm a retired family practice doc. I practiced in Amherst since 1992, and I now have lived in Amherst for the last six years. I'm involved with Amherst Neighbors, and I'm also a chronic illness navigator, and I work with mostly older adults who have chronic diseases and help them to find their way through the healthcare system and through their communities. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're doing this. Great. Uh, Jerry Weiss. Where's my muting button? We hear you. Um, oh, you hear me? Huh. We, we hear you. I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jerry Weiss. Uh, I've lived in Amherst for 41 years. I was um, the liaison to the Council on Aging for six years while on the select board. And uh, the liaison to the DAAC for six years 
and then on the DAC for 10 years. <laughs> and I'm currently president of Craig Stores. And also I was, I've been a psychotherapist for 40 years in Amherst and worked with a number of families uh, experiencing dementia and the caretaking of loved ones who had dementia. So it's Great. a lot of interest of mine. Great, we're glad you're here. Uh, Pam Rooney. And you're muted. Unmute there. Hi, Pam Rooney, uh, live on Cottage Street, and I'm very interested in understanding how dementia and aging um, plays into how we design our town centers and our sidewalks and streets um, as we think about the, the physical aspects of town and how we can apply what we know. Um, this is a wonderful organization. I think um, every town should have a group like this. Thank you. Uh, Pat? Uh, hi, I'm Pat Wish. I am very new to Amherst. I've learned how to say it without the H. <laughs> um, I was in Philadelphia. I am a psychologist and have had a relatively, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of families as a psychologist who are dealing with uh, family members with dementia. Um, I am on a committee at Applewood where I live now uh, with the other people that you've met. And we are trying to do some work on figuring out how best we can manage ourselves in together with able-bodied, it's quite different word, but I can't think of a better one, and people who are on the continuum. I'm very glad to be here, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jill Sherman. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, this might, I'm going to stay for the meeting. I didn't know what it was. Uh, Haley mentioned it to me, uh, but it's interesting to me. So I'm going to stay. I didn't know it was about dealing uh, with people with dementia, but um, I'm just going to stay. Okay. Great, and it's also for age uh, age friendly. So, it, um, you know, persons that are fifty five plus. Um, I I qualify by a couple decades. I'm seventy three, <laughs> so I'm I'm staying. Oh, wonderful! We're glad you're staying. Uh, Maura Keen. Hi, I'm Maura Keen. I'm a recently retired physician, and um, at the daughter of someone with dementia. So, um, and obviously I'm getting up there in the right age group too. I also write for the Indy and I'll be covering this meeting hopefully. Yay. Okay, and uh, Ray Harp. Hello, I'm Ray Harp. I'm the new director of recreation for the town. Um, uh, we focus a lot on health and community. Uh, and I think there's some, uh, very important overlap that we're going to have here. So I'm excited to be here today. Look forward to being involved as we move forward. Yay, great. Um, and so uh, we have a few attendees. So the, um, the person that's calling in with a 413 uh, area code, I believe if you press star six, Somehow my memory is escaping me. Um, you'll be able to speak if you, uh, um, and I just asked you to uh, unmute yourself. So maybe you'll, that'll help ask to unmute. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. There's a few on the second page also, Maureen. Okay. And uh, Terry, okay, so the person, um, while we wait for the person to chime in from the phone, maybe they wanna be quiet maybe they're not ready to speak. Uh, Terry Carr, uh, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Terry Carr. I'm the secretary or maybe the secretary for the Council on Aging and I volunteer at the Senior Center. Great, welcome. And 
Let's see, we have a panelist that's raising their hand. Oh, Saren, sorry, Saren. I don't know how I missed you. Hi, uh, I'm a resident of Amherst for 40 plus years. And until I retired from Stavros, um, I was very involved with the uh, needs of people with disabilities. And I'm a woman with a disability myself using a wheelchair. And I'm a member of the AAC committee. I'm very interested in this meeting. Wonderful. We're glad you're here. And uh, Lee Hines. Hi, hi, I'm Lee Hines, a resident uh, since 76, and I'm interested in the subject of this meeting. Wonderful. We're glad we're, we're glad that you're here. All right. Oh, we have one another raised hand. Hold on. Who's this? Oh, oh, Myra. Sorry, Myra. We have Myra Ross. Hi, I'm Myra Ross. I'm the current chair of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. I'm interested in physical and programmatic access for people who live in Amherst. And so this is a good place to be. Glad you're here. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Uh, I just want to say hello. And um, pe may, some people in my family have lived to be quite old. My mother to almost 102. So I see aging as a major, major part of life and uh, something that we are all very interested in. I'm really glad that we're gonna be working on this. And I do appreciate the mention somebody made earlier of sidewalks. I'll never forget that, but thank you very much. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, Tracy Zafian. Hi, um, my name is Tracy Zafian. I, no, it's fine. I've lived in Amherst for about 20 years. Um, Age-related needs have been an interest of mine for a long time. I've previously volunteered for things like Meals on Wheels and home visits. Um, I do have some close relatives with dementia. Um, I'm currently the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee, um, and we look at transportation really holistically and comprehensively, including in terms of access and equity across generations. That's a big focus of mine. Um, I previously did some graduate work at MIT at the MIT Age Lab. Um, and they really look at very different, many different aspects of aging and living better as people age. Um, my focus there was on transportation, particularly transportation access to healthcare services, um, including when people stop driving. And I currently work at UMass at the transportation center there. Um, and I work closely with the state DOT and they do a lot related to complete streets and better sidewalks and transportation alternatives and things, which I really think is important across generations again. So I'm glad to be here today. Thanks. Thanks, Tracy. Um, and uh, did, uh, did we miss anyone? Um, if you um, would like to introduce yourselves and uh, you please uh, use the raise your hand feature to indicate. Oh, uh, Nicole. Hi, um, I'm Nicole. I'm Becky's intern over at PVPC, and I also have resided in Amherst for the past three years at because um, I go to UMass. So I'm excited to work with a community that I am familiar with. Great. We're excited that you're part of this. Um, and I felt like I saw another hand, but maybe the hand disappeared. So, oh, Chad. Hi, Chad. A little late here. Uh, That's okay. My name's Chad. I'm with uh, Council on Aging, GCC, Community Engagement with Elders, uh, Amherst Neighbors, Northampton Neighbors, and so forth. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. We're glad that you're here. All right. Well, I think we have introduced ourselves. Um, so let's go on more, with the show. Oh, more, we have, oh more, Helen. Helen. Hi there. Hi. Sorry, I came in late. I was uh, tied up with something else. So I'm Helen McMillan, the uh, social worker and program director over at the Senior Center. Many of you know me. I've been here about 10 years, and I would say I'm interested in pretty much all the aspects of age and dementia-friendly issues. So, thank you for having me here. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate that you're here, and uh, we have Jen Moiston here. If you want to introduce yourselves, your name, your affiliation, and how long you've lived in Amherst. 
Sure. So my name is Jennifer Moyston, and I am the Assistant Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion for the Town of Amherst. I've lived in Amherst just about my entire life. Um, I was raised by um, in a woman who adopted me at an older age. And so I spent a lot of my time as a youth volunteering at the Amherst Senior Center with Meals on Wheels and also going to individuals' homes to be a companion. And so that has, and just, you know, living with my mom has showed me the need that there is for seniors and the frustration that they can go through as they um, become older and as dementia hits. And so I'm very interested as well as throughout my title with inclusive and diversity. Okay, wonderful. And we're gonna do one more intro and I think we need to move on um, is uh, another Maureen. Let's see here. If you wanna introduce yourself. I'm Maureen Mila Mili. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Yeah, I'm Maureen Malay, and I'm a member of the Board of Health. I'm sorry I joined late, but I'm happy to be here to participate and listen. Great. We're glad that you're here. Okay. So um, it's it's. Uh, great to hear everyone's uh, background and excitement for this project. Um, we're now going to turn to Becky uh, Bish, who is our uh, consultant from PVPC, that's the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who's going to give us a project overview and um, give an overview of um, the project timeline as well. So I, I turn to you, Becky. Maureen, um, and I'm just, I have a slideshow um, and then we will have um, an opportunity at the end for some more participation but um, just wanted to go through the um, give you a project overview and a um, timeline for the project and then Maureen and John Hornick will talk about a little more about um, the draft community engagement plan for a survey that we're going to be getting out there in the community um, and then we'll share some goals and interests of, of working group members and all of you um, and schedule another meeting to review the survey and then talk about working group meetings going forward. Um, so this is part of the Age and Dementia Friendly Pioneer Valley Initiative. This is a project that was funded by the Tufts Health Plan Foundation um, to get to allow uh, staff at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to assist our member communities in becoming age and dementia friendly. Um, this map shows sort of the different uh, levels of designation that communities in our region have. Um, the hill towns in the upper left uh, all went in as sort of a subregion. And so any town that has a red heart, um, that means that they have been designated as age friendly and have also submitted uh, community assessment and action plan. Um, communities with a purple heart like Amherst are our partners in this project. So we're working with these communities to do these community assessments and action plans. Um, Belchertown has already submitted their report. So they have that designation. We worked with them last year. Uh, the purple stars are communities that are dementia friendly. Um, so in addition to working with individual communities, we um, are in the process of thinking about submitting um, an application to become an age and dementia friendly region because we're finding throughout the communities that we work with, there are a lot of similar sort of issues that may be um, some that we could go in on together in terms of finding grants to you know, do, do studies that are more regional in nature. So why plan for an aging population? Um, so by 2035, it's estimated that uh, older adult, adults are going to outnumber children under 18. Um, so the aging population is growing and soon to become sort of a majority of our population in many communities. And that's throughout the US and also worldwide. And that's basically because people are living longer and also having fewer children. So um, in thinking about that, you know, we want to think about uh, are there barriers to people as they age, you know, and as, as people um, 
start to acquire cognitive and physical disabilities, are there barriers that prevent them from uh, participating fully in the community? So an age-friendly community, according to the World Health Organization, is an inclusive and accessible community that optimizes opportunities for health, participation, and security so that the quality of life and dignity are ensured as people age. And really, it's a great place to grow up and grow old. So if you're, if you're making um, you know, sidewalk ramps for people with, in wheelchairs, it also benefits people with strollers. Um, so it benefits everyone. And a dementia-friendly community is a community that's informed, safe, and respectful to foster the quality of life for those living with dementia and their care partners. So it's really exciting to see um, all of you here. And I, I've heard many of you say you have family members or have worked with people with dementia. Um, it is a growing issue. And in my own family, <laughs> I'm dealing with it right now as I, as I go through this work. Um, the age and dementia friendly designation process. Um, it's um, so first there's an online application through AARP for age friendly designation and Maureen will be working on that um, okay. in weeks. Um, and uh, the dementia friendly designation process is a little bit different right now. Um, the report gets submitted later. Um, then you form a working group, and I understand that um, several working group members have been appointed, and um, you know we'll we'll figure out you know what the final working group is as we as we go forward. Um, the main part of this project is to engage older adults, and so I'm I'm really excited that so many people are here, um, and people who um, can call themselves older adults. Um, we're all aging, but um, those of you who are older and um, living in the community, you know what your, you know what some issues are that need to be addressed. So we're really happy to, that you're here. Um, then we, once we've done the community engagement, both the survey and some other engagement, uh, we develop a community assessment and action plan, um, and then that report gets submitted to AARP Massachusetts and Dementia Friendly Massachusetts for final designation. Um, as, as well as a dementia friendly pledge that's signed by working group members and uh, an elected official. Um, and then the community is left to implement the action plan. So some communities have appointed committees to implement action plans going forward once PVPC is no longer involved. Um, and then as you go forward, um, it's great to report to AARP and dementia friendly Massachusetts of, of some of the progress you've made on the action plan. Um, this is a diagram from Dementia Friendly America of what an action team um, should, should encompass, um, some of the areas of the community that should be represented, so local government, uh, different residential settings, businesses, caregiver services and supports, um, clinics and hospitals, community members, et cetera. The faith community is a great one, um, home care providers, and legal and financial. So, I think a lot of different people are represented here today, which is great, but um, th these are areas to start thinking about in terms of how to, how to raise awareness within the community on, um, on the issue of dementia. Um, the community assessment, um, some of the tools we use are uh, community profile data from the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative. Um, so that's a combination of census and health data that's provided for every community in Massachusetts. Um, the survey, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but we've developed a shorter survey that's both online and will be in hard copy form um, for, to, to gather data from folks and especially targeted at older adults. Um, and then some additional engagement. So that will be um, either in-person or online um, forums to, to get more participation. Um, there's a healthy aging for all toolkit, which I'll talk about later. That's to incorporate inclusivity of all different sectors of the community from the very beginning. Um, we've worked on a municipal checklist um, that gives some examples of programs and policies that support healthy aging in all, each of these different domain areas. Um, and um, 
And then as we uh, develop the assessment, we also look at any existing plans and reports that are in the community. So the master plan, open space and recreation plan, and we pull out recommendations that um, apply to older adults and can support this work um, and, and point to them and, and sort of repeat them in the community assessment as this is, this is work that the town's already doing. So this is a um, snapshot of part of the um, community profile that has some of the census data and other health statistics. Um, some, some highlights are um, the population. And this is, again, this, this is a few years old. Um, they haven't updated their community profiles, but um, from, so American Community Survey data from 2012 to 2016. Um, so the total population 60 and older in Amherst is about 4,000 or 10% of the community. 7.3% um, was 65 and older or about 2,800 people. Um, almost 30% of people over 65 live alone. And 13% have been veterans of, are veterans of military service. 93% um, um, speak only English at home. So there are other languages spoken. And about 11 or almost 12% of people over 65 have, all, have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or related dementias. Uh, as we do the community assessment, um, we're using this model that was developed by the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative. And it's a combination of the World Health Organization's eight domains of the liv livability for an age-friendly community as well as the 10 domains of a dementia-friendly community that was developed by Dementia Friendly America. So the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative put those two together as well as uh, created a toolkit for age and dementia-friendly communities because um, there's a lot of overlap in each of these domain areas. Um, and I think this model is effective because it, it shows that an age and dementia friendly community is not just the built environment. So you have you know, outdoor spaces and buildings, housing and transportation. Those are all areas that are um, you know, sort of the focus of, of what planners usually look at. Um, but the community also includes you know, communication, information and technology. How do people know about programs and services that are available? Um, access, equity, and inclusion, um, the social environment, so social inclusion and participation, and civic participation and employment, public safety. It's great to see um, some folks from fire and police departments here, and that that's a big area, um, especially for people with dementia. You know, making sure you have um, you understand where people live and and if they have any health needs in case of emergency, um, and then health and community services as well. And some examples of a couple of these domains, I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but for transportation, you wanna have safe and affordable modes of both private and public transportation, uh, supported transportation for people with disabilities, walking and biking infrastructure that's accessible and comfortable for people of all ages and sidewalks, someone mentioned, that are in good condition um, for people with mobility limitations, um, as well as for people with strollers. Um, road crossings that are well lit and allow time for slower walkers or people in wheelchairs to cross um, and well-timed signals, um, sometimes pedestrian islands are effective and signs that are easy to read. Um, and then housing, uh, should there should be affordable housing, so smaller or shared units, um, accessory apartments are great for people who want to downsize. Um, home sharing can be an option for people who want to downsize or have uh, more affordable housing. Uh, housing that's accessible, um, so first floor units or elevator access um, or ramps where needed. Um, assisted living and long-term care, long care options, so I, I understand Applewood is potentially one of those, a number of you are from there. Um, home modification program. So for people who want to stay in their homes, are there modifications that are needed to make them more accessible? Um, and then services available for people who want to age in place. And Amherst Neighbors is a great example of that. Uh, volunteers providing base, you know, help with basic tasks for people who are aging in place. Um, and then smart growth, so housing that's located near retail and services and parks, places where people can walk when they can no longer drive. 
Um, and then neighborhoods that are safe where people can walk and roll where they need to go. Um, some examples of social inclusion and participation for people living with dementia um, could be memory cafes. So opportunities to socialize for people with dementia and their care partners. Um, support groups for caregivers and people with dementia. Um, memory kits at libraries. So uh, staff are trained on, on how to work with people in, with dementia. And some of these memory kits are, you know, might be games or, or things that people can do at various, if they're at various different levels of, of um, dementia. Um, purple tables are restaurants that have special hours um, for people with dementia and their caregivers. And um, that could include older adults. Um, it's a great way to, to get people in at off hours. Um, but also providing a quiet, um, a quiet environment that's less, less sort of um, confusing for people with dementia. Um, and then just raising community awareness. So educating the community and all different sectors of the community of how to recognize the signs of dementia, um, how to get evaluated and um, how to get support. Um, this is, I mentioned the Healthy Aging for All Toolkit. Um, this was developed by the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative, and it includes this um, community crosswalk. So across the top are the different uh, domains of an age and dementia friendly community. Um, and on the, the column on the left is a lot of all the different sectors that should be considered throughout this work um, to make sure that everybody's included. Um, so age, behavioral health, uh, country of origin, Again, people with dementia or disabilities, economic security, um, and, and on and on. Um, so these are all areas that we want to make sure are represented and considered when any, um, with any actions that are proposed. Uh, <clears throat> this is also from the Healthy um, Aging for All Toolkit. So why inclusion matters. Um, so for race and ethnicity, residents who encounter racism related barriers to accessing healthcare are le less likely to use it. Um, we wanna combat ageism and consider the contrib contributions of, to the community from people of all ages. Um, three out of every 10 older Massachusetts residents have been diagnosed with depression. So behavioral health is important. Uh, country of origin, um, people have different cultural views and that may impact their health or, or access to healthcare. Uh, people with dementia, again, estimated that 150,000 people in Massachusetts will be living with dementia by 2025. Um, and people with disabilities, so individuals with mobility, vision, hearing limitations, um, and focus on ADA accessibility as it relates to, to diverse populations. So those are just a few of those um, sectors that were listed. There's, there's many more in this guide, but I just wanted to provide an example of, of what's in that toolkit. Uh, we mentioned the, the Livable Community Survey. Um, this was sent out to working group members and we'll make it available to anyone else who joins the working group. Um, and we'll be um, trying to, to work on that a little more this month to try to get it out soon. Um, but it's, it's organized by the different domains. Um, and so it includes a number of questions um, in each domain area and ask, you know, what, what folks think are the primary uh, challenges for Amherst. Um, we tried to make it short enough that people will take it. It's still about seven pages long in hard copy form, but online it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so that will be finalized coming up. It'll be available online in hard copy. Um, and we'll also have, um, these are my intern, Nicole, who's here, uh, creates these great postcards um, and posters to get the word out about the survey. And those can be handed out or, or placed at stores um, just to get more participation or they can be posted on Facebook. Um, so we also will wanna talk about um, other ways to engage older adults. Um, I'm really excited to see all of these people, all of you here today. That means a lot of you are comfortable with Zoom and, and online meetings. So it's potential that we could do some online listening sessions going forward. Um, we've also done um, some topic-based meetings. So in Hadley and in Munson, I've done a um, few meetings 
sort of oriented around one or two of the um, topic areas, the, the domains of an age and dementia friendly community. And so we invite um, service providers um, as well as residents to um, listen to you know, what our findings are in terms of what the assets and challenges are in the community um, and to add to that and um, you know, say what their experiences are and, and what types of programs um, already exist. Um, we can do individual interviews with older adults um, who you know, might have problems with the survey. Um, so that's possible. We can make that an option when we hand the surveys out. Um, and we can also attend existing events. So um, if there are congregate, congregate lunches again, that's a great place to engage people. Um, I've, I've been at game nights um, in some communities where you know, people always come, so they're a captive audience and, um, and don't you know, enjoy participating in, in this work as well. Um, a proposed timeline going forward, um, we're hoping to review and finalize the survey this month. So um, we'll talk about a date for a next meeting in January. Um, and then hoping to post the survey online and have it in print form for mailing and hard copy distribution. Um, Maureen and John Hornick are gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and then March, we'll just look at the survey distribution status and start to discuss um, different types of community engagement events. Um, so if we decide on doing these focus discussions, um, that will start in April or May, depending on whether we decide it's going to be online or in, or in, uh, in person. Um, and we'll do probably four of those and then start working on an action plan and a community assessment report. So I'm going to stop sharing now and I'd be happy to take any questions and then I'm going to turn it over to Maureen to talk about the, the survey um, survey engagement strategy. Liz? Um, what would be the goal for the number of surveys to be meaningful for our size town? Um, we usually try to get at least um, 10, five or ten percent of older adults. So in Amherst, that's about four thousand. So um, it would be about so four thousand over sixty. So I'd say two hundred would be good, <laughs> but any more would be gravy. So I think you probably will have no problem with that. But John will also talk about um, doing a sampling of a sample mailing um, for the survey um, to try to to really get a good cross-section of participation. Uh, uh, Dorothy Pan. Okay, I, I want to stress something. Um, <clears throat> I am an old person and I'm also a town counselor. Um, I think that much more of the outreach has to be in person. So many senior citizens, number one, are not on Zoom and two, don't go to the senior center. So if you're really gonna find out what we have in town, it has to be, I mean, I like the idea you're gonna mail things, but if something looks complicated or new, some people aren't gonna do it. I, I, I think that getting a really good survey is so totally important, um, but it, the easy ways aren't gonna be good enough. The, the, the way that will get you the results you want will take lots of people and lots of work. And, and I'm willing to work on this with you, but, um, I, I know that I know lots of people, older people who really are not going to answer anything online or be involved in that at all. Yeah, I know that's that's been our experience in other communities as well. Um, and I am interested to hear from folks if you if if you think of of different types of events that people would come to um, and, and be great to get some suggestions on that as well. <clears throat> Mia. Yeah, I agree with Dorothy's comment about survey and how we collect the data. I've spent my whole work life in doing survey research and sampling is so crucial that yes, there will be a lot of people who qualify for the survey, but may not be able to fill it themselves. And then we pointed out some places where they don't speak the language, for example. 
So we have to, I think, include other ways of collecting data other than uh, sending it online because some of them can't even operate a computer. Mm -hmm. so we may have to do some personal interviewing for people who are qualified uh, sample but cannot do it. So mm -hmm. the, the sampling strategy is crucial for us to collect the right information. I'll be happy to help in any way I can Great. for the sampling design and the, uh, the, the methodology to collect the data. I don't know any yet because this is a lot of uh, the, the, the universe is rather large. So we need to have a representative sample of our universe. Thank you. Great, great, thank you. Uh, uh, Nancy Gilbert? I, I just wanted to reiterate um, uh, multiple languages, different cultures, and how are we going to uh, reach those groups and yeah. disenfranchised populations? Yeah, no, that's um, well, point well taken, Nancy. Um, staff, um, we've been um, strategizing of, of of determining, you know, what other languages other than English should uh, the survey uh, be provided in, um, both in printed uh, version and electronically. And we um, definitely would love any feedback on uh, particular languages of interest uh, in Amherst for, for reaching uh, uh, senior residents here in Amherst. Also, the um... Board, the Board of Health is um, trying to find funding and students to do a comprehensive health assessment. So this mm -hmm. would be piece of it. And also um, the uh, racism group they've done and they're working on a, a black census. So we all should work together um, to figure out how to gather this data and so that we each can use each other's data. That's, That's great. That, thank you. Um, Myra Ross, you need to unmute yourself, Myra. Uh, I was going to say that one way to reach people in this age group is to go through physicians, because mm. whereas they're not going to answer surveys online, I should say we, <laughs> I fit in the age group myself, um, and I would answer the survey online, but there are a lot of people who wouldn't. But physicians are, have con connections with most older adults. And so if you could find a way to contact the medical uh, community, there must be a medical society in Hampshire County um, that would have primary care connections to most of the people that you're looking for. That would be a great way to do it. Also, I wanna say that I know that this task force is, uh, has a name that it's primarily about aging and dementia. Most aging, I, I would say that most people as they age uh, also, or perhaps even more, develop hearing problems and vision problems. And that has barely been addressed by, uh, by the statement that was made. And I wanna make sure that it's front and center. Um, ways to cross the street have to involve people who can't see the light and who need audible signals. Maureen will get sick of hearing me say this, but never. Um, but you know, there is, a, there is a community of people with physical disabilities. It's not only people who can't walk uh, and who, or who walk slowly, but it's a bunch of people who cannot hear and who can, and, and that is a huge social isolation, perhaps more so than most things. If you can't, hear what's going on, you, um, you are very isolated. And vision as well, which is, I guess I might be the only blind pe person in this group, but there are, um, even if they're not totally blind, there are a lot of legally blind or substantially vision impaired older adults. And I think we have to put them front and center in the group as well. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Myra. Um, Mary? Jill? Uh, Mary uh, Talvrail? 
real? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I just want to second the idea about reaching out to primary care physicians' offices. Mm -hmm. I think if you reach out to the physicians, they might be overwhelmed. Um, but a lot of the offices have social services or a social worker there who can reach out to the caregivers of people with cognitive and other kinds of disabilities and help them fill out the survey. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Rosemary? Yes, I anticipate there will be a need for home visits for some of these older folks and our very competent social worker at the senior center cert certainly would be in touch with some of that. Also the count of seniors, the latest count of seniors in Amherst is now 5,239. So that was an old report with 4,000 seniors. There's quite a few more and it's growing fast. So consider home visits for these surveys. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Jill? Um, and nothing was mentioned, and I appreciate all your hard work. What plans do you have to include in your committee to incorporate that the aging and the dementia population will be living uh, for a while in the time of the COVID and possibly other epidemics? And are you asking in your service survey, are you isolating due to the COVID? And also I want you to know that home health aides currently in Massachusetts in private agencies, home health care agencies do not have to be vaccinated. Only mm -hmm. Medicare and Medicaid agencies. So if you want to advocate for something, uh, you could also have people write to their congressman to get uh, required these aides to be vaccinated. So there are many problems with the COVID and having congregate meals, con a meeting in restaurants. Maybe people aren't going to feel comfortable doing that. Hmm. Uh, and so I don't know if when your committees are meeting to include the fact uh, that there is a pandemic. And um, it makes the socialization harder. That's all. Thank and you for thank that. You. We do we do have a question on the survey about social isolation, and we started this project in 2020, so it has definitely come up as as quite a big issue. Thank, thank you, you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Of course, uh, Helen. Oh, uh, Helen, you're muted. No, oh, it's not working. Helen? Oh, um, let's see here, I asked to unmute. I think your mic isn't working. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes, yep, All no right. problem. Um, so I just wanted to piggyback on what Rosemary said. Um, if we can't do home visits, if we're still uh, restricted with COVID, we also have several uh, tax work off people here who are retired social workers. So certainly I could work with them and we could have a team of us making phone calls to do some of these surveys. Uh, also another retired social worker um, who comes in here is Juana Trujillo, who is bilingual in Spanish. So that would be four of us making phone calls to work in a survey, if it came to that, if we couldn't do home visits. Great. Great, thank you, Helen. And I, um, I think I saw a couple other hands. Um, bear with me one second. Um, Let's see. Oh, uh, uh, maybe that was it. Were, were there any other questions or comments? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I, I've been um, taking note of everyone's um, comments and, and questions um, so we can uh, incorporate those um, in, into the project. Um, okay. So now we're going to talk about um, the how we want to, um, you know, uh, engage um, older seniors. You know, a big part of this project is is to is engagement and, and provide outreach and provide education, um, and uh, to better understand how well our community serves older adults uh, and people with dementia, and to explore um, how we can work together as a community to improve um, 
opportunities and outcomes for older adults and, and people with dementia. Um, and so we uh, will be uh, distributing a survey that Becky had talked about, and we're going to, with the um, with the assistance and additional funding through the Amherst Housing of uh, the Amherst Affordable Housing Trust, um, we will be doing um, a sampling uh, of surveys uh, through a mailing, um, and we have uh, the chair person of that board, John Hornick, um, who will talk in just a couple minutes, uh, briefly talk about that process. Um, and so, yeah, so we would like to do a, a, a mailed um, a survey um, and um, also have um, hard copies uh, available at key places uh, for seniors to pick up and, and fill out the survey. So we'll have surveys um, at the Bang Center for the, the Meals on Wheel pickup um, location uh, at Craig's, Craig's door, uh, the uh, Amherst Survival Center, um, primary care offices and pharmacies. Uh, and we would love to have any other um, suggestions of locations of where to keep hard copies available. And um, we could include um, uh, surveys in other languages other than English at these locations as well. And uh, we um, will be definitely looking uh, for assistance from key um, organizations to get the word out about these surveys, um, both you know, electronically and, and in hard copy. Um, we're gonna ask um, organizations to um, include in their you know, monthly new e e newsletters or their uh, e email distribution lists um, to, um, you know, promote this survey and this project. So we'll be asking, you know, the, our senior services uh, to include it in the um, the senior spirit, uh, which is the their um, bi monthly um, new e newsletter. Uh, we'll be asking Amher Amherst neighbors to promote the survey and the project. Uh, League of Women Voters of Amherst. Uh, the Amherst Housing Authority, and of course, the town of Amherst will be promoting um, the, sur the survey um, and the project on our town website. Uh, we have an Engage Amherst uh, page, um, to, uh, which will focus on all our engagement op um, strategies as part of this project, and our you know social media channels like uh, Facebook and Twitter, um, mm -hmm. and we'll reach out to our local uh, newspapers, uh, like the Gazette the Amher and the Amherst Indy and, and the Bulletin to help get the word out about, about the surveys and, and the project. Um, and um, let's see here. Um, and, and then there's, um, and those are just a sample of different organizations that we'll be asking to get the word out. We'll be turning, uh, you know, asking assistance from various uh, boards and committees to get the word out, including the town council, um, the, uh, the Amherst uh, Affordable Housing Trust, uh, the different, uh, the various uh, senior uh, residential communities such as Green Leaves, um, uh, Applewood and Amherst Housing Authority um, and our uh, racial equity task force. Um, and the list goes on and on. Um, of, of uh, um, including church groups to get the word out about the surveys and the project in general. And um, so I would like to turn to, um, to John uh, Hornick, who uh, will talk a, a little bit more about the printed surveys um, and the importance of, of, of providing printed surveys. Okay, thanks, Maureen. I assume you can hear me. Yes. Um, I originally got into this because the Housing Trust is wants to see data related to housing, and we can't get data related to housing unless the survey itself is reasonably well responded to by a representative group of people in Amherst. So just to begin, my reason for wanting to be involved is to assure that a representative random sample of Amherst residents over the age of 55 will have an opportunity to complete the survey. 
but I also know that that's not sufficient. Um, and you, if you do a random sample of adults over the age of 55, you're going to find that a number of population groups are not going to be there in sufficient numbers to learn what their needs and interests are. So we need a supplemental uh, convenience sampling strategy to assure their representation. So basically, we have two arms. As people have mentioned earlier, this is a complicated process, so I don't forget this, I want to say. In order to do the best job possible, we will need help. Uh, we'll be reaching out to students, which is one reason why we want to get this off the ground as quickly as possible. But we're interested in having community members assist us in the process too. So if you are interested in helping in any way, it can be interviewing, it can be data, other kinds of data collection, it can be data entry, or even data analysis, or planning, please let us know as soon as possible. Please let Maureen know that you are interested and I will be getting back to you. Um, next week, I will have a survey group appointed and I'll be asking about 20 people to participate in that process, including you, Mila. I haven't forgotten your interest. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so the strategy for the mailed survey is the following. We will use the town street list to identify people over the age of 55. And we will send out a mailed survey to a random sample of 500 residents who are on that list. Um, and then we'll wait three or four weeks. And we know that not everybody's going to respond. And so we will send out a second mailing to people who didn't respond. And through that process, I'd hope to get back at least a couple of hundred surveys. Um, people can respond to the mailing. There'll be a self-addressed uh, self stamped envelope back to us. So people just need to fill out the paper survey and send it back. They'll also have the option of filling it out online. So they can do one or the other. Uh, and as I said, with two mailings, we hope to have a reasonably good sample. But as I said earlier, that's not good enough. We need to be reaching out to other groups. So we'll be getting surveys out to the various groups that Maureen was mentioning. Um, part of that will go out electronically and I'm gonna do my list so people can come back and say, oh, you forgot. And that's what I wanna hear from you the town website, um, the Council on Aging, uh, and this can include, include newsletters, Amherst Neighbors, the Jones Library, uh, Stavros or the Disability Access Committee, um, the League of Women Voters of Amherst, the publication, the Amherst Indie Mora. Also, we'll be looking at Facebook pages. There's a Housing Advocacy Coalition, and the Racial Equity Task Force. And we'll go at an organizational level. We'll have requests to participate at Craig's Place, at the Bang Center Meal Distribution, at the Amherst Survival Center. And we'll also look at other kinds of person-to-person -person requests to, permit, to participate, particularly with Amherst communities of colors. So that's my current list. And some of the detail all needs to be worked out, but if you've got another idea, this is a good time to let us know where else we should be going. I heard people mention uh, primary care physicians offices so that we might find a way to try to do that. But most important, as I said, we need help. And so if you're interested in helping, let us know. We will appreciate your voluntary efforts. Thanks, John. Uh, it looks like there's a, a few people that have questions or comments. I'll start with Dorothy. Um, I have a thought that uh, I know you may think is silly, but I think lollipops are great. And um, I think that there should be a lollipop either for picking up your form or for putting it into the slot. Um, and, um, you know, a lollipop is real. I know you, I think you're talking about some chance to get some money. Most people say, I'll never win that. 
but a lollipop's a lollipop. So I'm just hoping we can get a donor to buy a lot of lollipops. Thank you. How about a Tootsie Pop? <laughs> I love I love the idea. I love the idea. We'll talk about it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Nancy, uh, Eddie? Could you just give us a, a quick example, a quick summary of the kind of questions that you're asking on the survey? Uh, I'll let uh, Becky give a couple examples, if, if you don't mind, Becky. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'll actually share my screen for a minute um, just as I go through it. Um, and so again, this was modeled on a survey that was, uh, we've worked with Agawam, Belchertown, Munson, and Hadley so far, and where. Um, so we've kind of been refining the survey as we go. Um, so we have sort of basic background information. Um, how important is it uh, for you to remain in Amherst as you get older? And how would you rate Amherst as a place for people as they age? Um, employment status. Um, how important is it for you to stay in your own home, either independently or with a caregiver? Uh, we ask people to rate their physical and emotional health. Um, and which areas are most important for Amherst to focus on in the next five years. Um, we then get into whether you need help or, and if you know where to get it in the areas of housing, health and community services, or coping with various things like abuse, uh, forgetfulness, smoking, other um, related issues. Um, whether you've been concerned about um, different issues or had to skip due to financial constraints. Um, and this, this survey that I have, Nicole has gone through and said how many times each question was skipped in various communities. So that's one thing. Um, we'll be having a, a survey subcommittee to look at the survey and think about, you know, is that question necessary if it, it's going to be skipped a lot? We ask about housing and different types of housing, um, where people live now and where they would like to live um, if their circumstances change. Um, health and caregiver services, um, you know, whether people have some kind of an impairment that limits the ability to participate in the community um, and, and types of services people need or have given to as a caregiver. Um, and what you know, what is the reason to, to that people are need caregivers or, or are providing caregiver services? Um, and then we get into transportation, uh, whether people, primary forms of transportation and any difficulties, um, communication, civic and social engagement. So whether people are comfortable with internet, um, what primary sources of information, um, and how often people are in touch with fr friends or family. Um, and then for councils on aging or senior centers, we have different types of programs and ask people how many you know, of these programs they take advantage of. And if they don't use a senior center, what are some reasons for that? Um, so that's a quick overview. And you know, we're, this is an opportunity to, um, you know, think about what are some areas you really want some focused responses on. So um, again, if anyone has any suggestions um, or wants to be part of the survey subcommittee, um, please contact me or Maureen and we can we can give you our email address. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. Um, we have a couple, um, Charlotte, did you have a question? Um, more just a, a comment and, and circling back to some of the previous discussion, um, I know just in working with my own dad who has dementia, um, reading and writing are great challenges for him. So I think that just highlights uh, the need for some face-to-face -face communication with folks, If you're especially where some of this work is to, to help support uh, this older uh, adults with dementia. So um, uh, I would just sort of reiterate that. Um, uh, one other group that could be tapped into as well is um, he actually gets the home delivered meals um, that come out of the senior center. So perhaps the folks that are delivering the meals could 
um, leave surveys or maybe have their routes um, altered in such a way that they have more time that they could actually spend with the person that they're delivering the meal to to actually ask the questions on the survey. Great suggestion. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Black churches, the Hmong and Lao community. Oh, great. That's good to know. Yeah. Given. Thank you. I'm just typing this down. So um, I am too. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. Great. Uh, Tracy? Um, so I had a question. I mean, just given the length of the survey, right? It's like 40 questions, including a bunch of sub questions, like whether. I don't know if you looked at this in any of the other communities you worked with um, in terms of perhaps having a shorter version of the survey that even though ideally you want everybody to get through all 40 questions plus subparts, but maybe if there was some shorter version with maybe 10 or 15 questions that if you go to a particular audiences like such as the survival center or something where at least mm -hmm. you get a baseline much number a larger number of responses on those super important questions um and relatedly i was wondering about the idea of maybe i was thinking about this even with the last comment about um in the senior meal deliveries but if the survey was available on a tablet then that could be put made available at the senior center or the survival center and things that would be one way to answer and then also then the responses would need to be entered manually later. Thank you. I think Mila has her hand up. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How long is the survey right now? The way it is. Um, it's seven pages now, um, and online in SurveyMonkey, it's taken an average of 11 minutes. Um, this is pared down from the AARP Livable Community Survey, which was about 35 pages long. <laughs> um, and they, you know, they have an online version, but we just thought that was too cumbersome. So I'm happy to talk about making it shorter or doing a shorter version, but I, I defer to those survey experts like you, Mila. Oh, you're very kind. But no, another way of doing it, because it's important to have the answers from each respondent as a whole. One of the things that we can do, or we might want to think about is to divide the data collection in two phases where half of the data is collected phase one, and, and then another time is an, a phase two or split the sampling. What do you think, John, John Hornick? <laughs> okay, well, I'll say two things. One, I have spent some time with the survey. Initially, I was wondering if housing was gonna be adequately represented and having gone through it a couple of times or actually more, I, I have no problem with the number of housing questions or what the content of those are. I have no suggestions. I also ran the entire survey by the um, Amherst Housing Trust at our last meeting and actually a meeting before. And people did say, well, it looks a little long, but nobody could identify a specific item that they wanted to cut. And, wow. you know, I looked at the analysis that Nicole had done for Becky, and it shows that there are some items that are not as well responded to as others. For example, there's an open-ended item that people just skipped. So let them skip it. No big deal. I think there are other items like that, which have apparently a high skip rate, but that's okay. Let people skip it. It doesn't take them much long, uh, <coughs> very long to decide they don't want to answer. So I think the survey is cut down pretty well. Um, to do something that takes 10 or 15 minutes online is not a lot of time. Oh, okay. um, and if people have problems reading or writing, then yeah, we have to find another way to get them support, but reducing the size of the survey isn't gonna solve that problem. Okay. So I kind of like it the way it is, um, but I, I think we should definitely listen to other people. You know, for example, Tracy, you were concerned, but. I'd like to know what you would cut out. So, so we're going to um, hold a, a follow-up um, 
meeting uh, specifically on surveys um, and we will um, schedule that at the end of this meeting. Um, um, it can be everyone or it could be a smaller group of um, a smaller uh, gr group um, to meet and um, go through the survey and finalize that. Um, we hope to have the surveys ready to be distributed um, starting in early February. Um, so we are, are on a fast track, if, if possible, to um, have this survey specific meeting in the next week or two. Um, and so we'll continue that conversation at that meeting. And um, I'm realizing that we're we're slightly um, behind schedule. So um, we could take one more question or comment, um, but if there aren't any, um, let's uh, continue on um, our agenda. Um, so I, I don't know if anyone has any other uh, question, one other question or comment about the surveys. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so we're, let's continue. We're gonna have Haley. Um, talk about, um, um, help facilitate um, our next agenda item, which is uh, sharing of goals and interests of the working group members with regard to the age and dementia friendly planning process. And I'm, I'm just gonna share my screen and, and write these down as people talk um, also, but Haley, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I have some sort of, some sort of overarching goals that are usually goals for this type of process and. Um, so want your agreement on those, but also go ahead. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Do you want me to read those or I've got a little bit I'd like to say? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll just start by saying, first of all, we thought we would only have 10 or 15 people to, so to have almost 40 is a really amazing sign. Um, the Senior Center has a vested interest in this process. You know, it's part of our mission is to help older adults age in place. And this is part and parcel to that. I see it as a very good sign on behalf of the town that they're recognizing the importance of older adults and showing their commitment to amplifying their voices uh, with regards to town planning. Mm -hmm. You know, our goal at the Senior Center is to represent all older adults, not just those who can use Zoom. We'd really like to see representation from the entire community. Um, and certainly that includes caregivers. Um, and personally, I'm hoping that it leads to more participation at the Senior Center. Uh, we have a lot of resources to offer. We're not just meals or helping with an application. We offer some really meaningful social interaction and great community. Um, and then more to the overarching goals, you know, we would like to get that age and dementia friendly designation. Um, that can help pave the way for grant opportunities to fix some of those sidewalks, for example. Um, and just to increase awareness, um, both cultural and community sensitivity towards older adults, raising awareness about dementia and how we can support people with dementia and their caregivers and engaging older adults to understand challenges and opportunities that they may experience in the community. Yeah, and feel free to add to this. We have a couple minutes if anyone wants to just shout out some other goals or specific interests you have. Uh, looks like Chad, uh, would you like to add something? Sure. Um, we at the Council of Aging uh, have one of the longest term um, town employees as, uh, as our director. Um, that individual is now gone and uh, one has replaced and we've moved on to another. Um, it's been many, many decades since the Council on Aging has done its advocacy part for elders in, in the town by strategic plan. If there's any way we could get a couple of questions on the survey to uh, get some data that we can direct our efforts uh, towards our strategic plan, that would be great too. Great, that's yeah, a great. Oh, yeah. And I think there are a few questions at the end, right, that talked about the services that we offer and whether people use it and reasons that they don't. Yeah, and you'll want to tailor that to your specific programs too. Yeah. Um, are there any other uh, comments or questions? 
related to this? Let's see here. I see a hand raised. Give me one second. Uh, Alex? This may be implicit in things that you're gathering, but I guess I would love to see things that are around health um, as well as, so if you go to Taiwan, for example, you know, you see elderly people out everywhere and sort of the way that their parks and structures are set up are for people to actively engage in them, but specifically people over 65. And so if I, I would just want some element not to just be raising awareness of, but how do we create a healthful community for people who are aging, no matter what that looks like, whatever they're dealing with in that in their aging. Great. Um, thank you for that. Let's see here. Um, are there any other um, hands? Oh, Jerry? Hi, thank you. Um, I think it's it's kind of been covered, but I wanted to make sure that at least there was a spot for in the um, in the goals to um, Jerry with a G. <laughs> no problem. Um, the the uh, kind of public work segment of aging. I know that the DAC has been kind of on top of this every year, making requests. Uh, curb cuts, uh, repaired sidewalks, repaired crossway walks, um, hearing uh, crosswalks, uh, they're often either not working or they're so faint you can't hear them. Um, and snow clearing, uh, especially sidewalks and, and uh, curb cuts and parking areas, just to have a whole, a, an area of public works issues. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Jerry, for And for I adding. think, <laughs> if I could bring up a sore point, the, uh, there's, the continues, I believe, to be no access to the uh, Amherst, uh, what is it, the uh, information center? Well, the welcoming center. We're working on it, but yes, <laughs> we, I hear no, you. <laughs> Worked at, we've been working on it for about eight years, I think. Sore subject, but thought I should put it in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there were a couple other people raising their hand. Uh, Liz Walsh? Yeah, I just, I have one that's a goal more in terms of the process, even than the outcome, in terms of the ability to use the survey as a way to kind of galvanize and bring together older adults to start to kind of advocate on their own behalf. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, this seems like a really wonderful opportunity to do outreach and to bring people together in that way. Thank you, we agree. Um, let's see, Dor Dorothy Pam. Um, do you have questions on the survey about uh, internet and cable TV? Um, you know, I've just realized recently, you know, how lucky I and my husband are uh, during this time of, uh, you know, basically staying in our house forever, um, that uh, we can get great television shows because we've got good cable, uh, we have internet, and uh, all this costs a lot of money. Uh, is there any subsidy for people? I mean, I would hate to have not enough money to have these services and to be sitting in my house for two years and being being old. I think it would be terrible. So I'm just wondering if there are questions on it and any programs that anyone knows that helps bring people into a more equal situation. Yeah, that comes up a lot, um, especially during the pandemic, because it's so important to be connected, um, you know, to technology to for both social and health and and all of that. So thank you for that. But there are questions, I think there are questions, but I will just confirm that. Um, that's, yeah, that's a great question, Dorothy. Um, are there any other uh, questions or comments? I see a hand, I saw, I saw a hand. I, do I see, mm, hold on a second. Um, oh, uh, Rosemary. Um, I can't, can't hear you. Hold on a second. Rosemary, do you still have a question? 
how about any federal money to help people who have no internet or cable connection um, if from the COVID package relief plan? Is, is that a possibility? There's a $10 a month um, set up right now for those with low income. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you for chiming okay. in, Chad. And uh, let me add one thing to the public work segment. Perhaps keeping the white lines painted on the side of the road for elders who still drive at night. <laughs> That's a good suggestion. Um, I see. Oh, uh, Lee. Yeah, kind of, kind of related uh, in terms of uh, the availability of funding for home modification, um, like uh, stair stair uh, elevators and, and uh, access. Um, not that the programs may not be available, but uh, can the, uh, the visibility of those programs uh, and, and how to engage, um, uh, I'd be interested in helping with. No, that, that's a great suggestion. Uh, Haley and I and Becky, well, Becky who hosted um, Becky is part of the uh, regional uh, age-friendly committee through PVPC, and um, they had a recent meeting last week, and Haley and I attended it, and um, we learned of some two grant programs to assist with home modifications geared towards seniors and uh, for per, uh, persons with disabilities, and uh, and so it's how do we um, inform others of, of this um, uh, great grant, um, grant program. And I know, I think Haley is going to include that in her next, uh, senior spirit yes. newsletter, but you know, what, what other ways can we help get the word out about, um, you know, different grant programs it is definitely, um, important to think about and how to execute, how to implement that. So yeah, that's a great comment. Right. Uh, Saren? Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Saren, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, being a person with a disability, uh, I can only use special transportation. So I'm sure there are lots of elderly in my situation. And for us to participate, in the activities of town, like if there's a concert or a play or something to join, we need assistance with transportation. And years ago, uh, the town had transportation and uh, the, it was uh, managed through senior center. And that provided, um, provided the accessibility needs of people even to go to work or to go to their medical appointments or to join activities. And many of us that are disabled can be very helpful doing volunteer work, but getting to the site is a big, is an issue. I know this personally. And you know, right now during the COVID time, these Zoom meetings really helped us a lot from my perspective, at least. We can easily uh, set our alarms and tune in at the time, but when things get back to normal, again, many of us with transportation issues will be isolated in our homes. So I think in the survey, we should stress on the transportation needs of people so we can hear more about the challenges. You know, like people without any disability can just call Uber, right? But we cannot do that. I don't know, maybe Ubers could provide some um, accessible transportation, that I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Saren. Um, uh, Sue, uh, Sue. Yeah. Sue? 
Uh, I just wanted to respond to Lee's inquiry and to let people know that um, at the beginning of January, Amherst Neighbors had a program on the home modification loan program. Uh, the town of Amherst is designated to Wayfinders as our agency. So Araceli from Wayfinders was a presenter. It's recorded. And if you go to amherstneighbors.org to our webpage, you don't need to be a member. You can see a link to the recording on our YouTube channel. It's a free, interest-free loan program that does not go into repayment until you sell your home. It's a fantastic opportunity for people to make their homes accessible so they can stay put. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I should have the majority of everyone's email addresses. Um, there are some, um, a few of you, I, 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 um, I didn't, um, um, you might have heard about this event through um, the Gazette or through word of mouth. So I might not have everyone's email, um, but if, 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 if um, you haven't reached out to me or Haley or Becky directly, um, please uh, send us an email so we can stay in touch for this project. And um, we can certainly send you a link to these uh, loan um, programs that um, uh, Sue was talking about and, and Lee. Um, and uh, we can send you a link to the recording that's uh, featured on the Amherst Neighbors uh, website as well. Um, are there any other questions or comments? So we're, we're a little over time. We should probably, um, I don't know if we should just set a date for the next meeting or um, yeah. email. <laughs> yeah. Interested. So we're, we would like to have a, um a a meeting that um uh, to review and finalize the survey uh we would um we're hoping to have that meeting next week and today is thursday um would um i don't know if thursday at one o'clock is sort of a good general time for folks um we don't need the whole group um, to attend this meeting, but we welcome it. Uh, we welcome everyone if, if it does work um, for everyone. But um, I guess how how could we? Um, is, is there anyone that's interested to take part of this survey specific meeting? And if so, would one o'clock next Thursday work? Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I guess you could you could raise your hand if you would like to be part of this survey specific meeting. That would be that would be question one. Okay, so okay, so I see four hands raised, five raised hands. Okay, let's see here. Hold on a second. Um, so uh, John Hornick, of course. Uh, Chad, Mora, Tracy, Lu Lu uh, Lu um, Lucia. And Myra, sorry, I'm going through this slowly. Um, Nicole, Nicole, Sue, Alex, Carolyn. Okay, so I'm gonna jot down these names. Um, so that would be for the survey. Okay. And oh, audio. let me- Maureen, uh, can you send out that survey before the meeting? Oh, sure. Yep. John, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have I'm, everyone's emails address or do you want them to just email you, Maureen? Yeah, that would be helpful um, just to be safe that. Um, so yeah, even helpful. if you think that I have oh. your email, maybe just shoot me an email just so we can be safe. Um, I'll so, it up. I'll oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and Maureen, your address is? Uh, it's Pollock M at AmherstMA.gov. Um, Becky's going to share share it on the screen so it's p o l l o c k m at amherst ma dot gov okay lucia lucia okay um uh lucia um oops i didn't amherst <laughs> amherst oh no. 
uh, I, sh I should look at the screen to make sure you're spelling my name right. Yeah, right. Yep, that's good. That's good. Yep. So two L's and M. Okay, great. And so I'm still jotting down the names. So bear with me. So John, Maura, Tracy, Ma Myra, Nicole, Sue. Uh, yeah, and Carolyn. if you don't, if you don't know if um, Maureen has your email, please email her. So don't forget me. It's Mila. Mila. Yeah. Right. Oh, yep. Thank you. Uh, B, uh, B, 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 okay, Chad, and did Mila raise her hand? Or yes, I had my hand oh, raised. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, great. So, um, so we're going to schedule that for next Thursday at one o'clock via Zoom, and I'll, I'll send, um, I'll send uh, everyone um, a, uh, a meeting invite and the Zoom info and all that. And then um, we wanted to um, so that's just again we'll just be for the survey, um, and then we will be having monthly meetings um, for the working group, um, and uh, we would um, ideally would like to maybe just have it the same sort of consistent, um, you know, uh, weekday and time. So uh, let's see here is what we. This um, is the Maureen, third. I think I think we might have to send a, a doodle poll for the first meeting. I'm gone for two oh, weeks sure. in February. So um, why don't we do that and we can because I sure February, February's pretty booked unless you want to meet without me, but um no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we probably send um, we'll send some a, a few times to and once we you know get all the emails for working group members, um, we'll send that out. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll send out a, um, I'll send out a email to everyone um, uh, recapping today's meeting. Um, we have recorded today's meeting, so I can include that. I can include the information about the loan um, modification program and uh, the, uh, the information through Amherst Neighbors and I can include a doodle poll for conducting our next meeting. Plus the um, current survey, maybe. Oh, yep. Yeah, yes. Thank you. What? Okay. Thank you. Everyone's helpful. Okay. Um, so, all right. Great. Um, are there any questions before we wrap up? Okay. Well, I thank you so much for uh, such a wonderful, engaging meeting. Uh, we definitely look forward uh, working with you for this uh, very essential and, and important project. And um, we'll see you, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Um, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.